Good morning. Let us pray. Father, we'll bless you, Lord, this morning, all oh, our souls. We thank you, Lord, because we are standing on holy ground. We're here with one another, and we're here to fellowship with you. Father, we thank you for this privilege that we have, that you bind us together in love because you are love. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us to be like you, to be like Jesus. That is our desire, almighty God. We thank you for this platform that we can come to every morning so that we can renew our strength in you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit that continually attests to it that we are the children of the Most High. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the desires of your heart and of our heart also. Our desire is to do your will, to love you, to serve you, O oh Lord, and to obey you. Everlasting Father, we commit everything that we are going to do today into your hands. Lord, take preeminence in the name of Jesus, because everything that is committed into your hand, it is safe and secure. Blessed be your name, Lord, have your way in our midst today. We will forever be grateful. Thank you, Lord, for how far you have brought us, and we thank you for where you are taking us, because you have a plan for us. Your plan for us is for good and not for evil. We are so grateful that you are our Father. Everlasting Father, we thank you. We worship you. We pray with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 We give all the glory and honor and praise unto the name of the living God. We thank God so much for another beautiful day in his presence. Uh, we are all welcoming to God's presence this morning. God is here. Jesus Christ is here. The Holy Spirit is here with us. And we give all the glory to him. We'll go into our time of worship now. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome this place.
this year. When you say, I give you everything, what does that mean? you alone 
but you Amen, amen. We give all the glory and honor and praise unto the name of the living God. We thank God so much for the worship time. Um, it's time for us to go into our time of prayer. And Sister GVK will be leading us in our time of prayer today. Let's welcome her. Uh, good morning. Today, it will be declaration of our faith. The first prayer is, Father, thank you for today. I thank you because you have given me a mouth and wisdom that as I say it, I will have it. Thank you. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain say nor resist. Lord, I enter your presence with trust, knowing that you will give me wisdom. I tell you, you can pray anything. And if I believe that you'll receive it, it will be yours. You promise to impart wisdom to me if I will listen to your words and attain unto you wise counsel. Lord, I enter your presence with trust, knowing that but you will give it's not the start in the heat. Let my mouth speak wisdom, Lord, because of the righteousness you have imparted in me. Teach me to number my days, Lord, that I may always apply my heart unto wisdom. Lord Jesus, you are the wisdom and power of God, because I am in you and desire always to abide in you. You are made unto me wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. It is this reality that causes me to glory in your favor, almighty, also to glory in you forever. I thank you that you call me, you save me, you preserve me and you sanctify me. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you Lord for your love for me. I am so grateful, everlasting father. I worship you this morning. I thank you. You are worthy of all my praises. You are worthy of all my adoration. And I give them to you. Father, I thank you, Lord. Declare the salvation of your family this year. Declare that in Jesus Christ's mighty name, your family belongs to the Lord. Our family belongs to the Lord Almighty. He has taken control of our family. Father, we worship you. You say we are in our household. We shall serve the Lord. So declare that the salvation of your family this year, not next year, before the end of this year, declare that in Jesus Christ's mighty name, your family belongs to the Lord. Everything that we are, everything that we have belongs to the Lord Almighty. Uh, thank you. Our second prayer, prayer number two. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the living God. We worship you, Lord. Our family belongs to you, Almighty God. You are you alone will we serve, you alone will we worship in everything that we do. Again, declare that your family belongs to Lord. We know the Lord. We will sanctify our family because we know the Lord. He has called us. Blessed be his holy name. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Second prayer, okay. Third prayer. Uh, third prayer, commit your walk into the Lord and thy thought shall be established. I declare that whatever you lay your hands upon to do henceforth will prosper, that from today your hands shall be sufficient for you. Speak sufficiency into your life. Um, and it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And this is the blessings of Judah. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. Let his hand be sufficient for him, and be thou an help to him from his enemies. My God is the God of more than enough. All of my spiritual, physical, financial, social, emotional needs are supplied in Christ. How I praise you and thank you, Lord for your rich blessings in my life. I delight myself in you, Lord, and I'm thrilled to realize that you are giving me the desires of my heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you come, that I may have life and that I might have it abundantly. Father, I thank you that you know what things I need before I even ask you. I know you will take care of me. You love me so much because you have 
called me to yourself. You have set me apart to be used of you. You have saved me from the hands of the enemy. Lord, I thank you. I commit my work and my business unto, your, unto you, Lord. I, and I know that, Lord, you will use my hand. You say you have, ble you have blessed my hand and my feet, O oh Lord, for battle. Lord, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to walk in your vineyard. Father, I'm ready to be used of you as a vessel of honor used by the master. Blessed be your holy name. Be thou magnified, O oh Lord. You are my sufficiency. You are my all in all. Therefore, I commit myself into you. Do with me what only you can do. Almighty God, I thank you. Be magnified, O oh Lord. Now be magnified forever. Declaration number four. Um, I declare that henceforth, you will begin, I will begin to walk as a sign and wonder on this earth. That signs and wonders become my identity. Let us pray. You, will, you live in the realm of continual breakthrough. Living on the supernatural is the biblical will of God for my life. Say that for your life also. Behold, I and my children, whom the Lord had given me, have for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Thank be to God who gives me victory in every area of my life. I have victory over the accuser of the brethren through the blood and by the word of my testimony. Thank you, Father, for victory over every weakness and problems in my life. Forgive me, Lord, for the times when I've allowed circumstances and doubts uh, to defeat me, I will always remember that it is faith that gives me the victory to overcome the world. Because I have been born of you, Lord, I can claim your victory over the world. I know that my labor will not be in vain because your victory up upholds my life. You have given me victory over every sin and temptation. Blessed be your holy name. Prayer number five. Henceforth, I continually enjoy angelic protection everywhere I go. I am surrounded and secure by the host of heaven. The angels of God are around me, and the glory of the Lord is my rear guide. Oh, the angel of the Lord encamped around me, about them, the fear him, and deliver them. For he shall give his angel charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me off in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. The shield of faith quenches all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You will be with me in trouble, almighty God. You will deliver me and honor me. Satisfy me with long life and show me your salvation. Cover me with your feathers so that under your wings I will be safe. I will safely trust. Let your trust become my shield and buckler so that I will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. Be the wall of fire around me be that you will be the glory in the midst of me. Praise your name. Assign a guiding angel to me, Lord, so that no evil will befall me. Protect me from every evil. I place my hand in your hand with the confidence that comes from knowing that you will take good care of your property. Lord, I belong to you. I have declared you as my Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus. It is only in your hand, Lord, that I'm safe and secure. Lord, and that is that satisfy my soul. Thank you, Lord. To you alone be the glory, the honor, and the adoration. Thank you, Father, for always hearing me. Thank you for hearing us this morning, O oh Lord. Prayer number six. I declare that I'm walking in the spirit of wisdom and discernment. I have the spirit of the fear of the Lord operating in me. Hallelujah. Uh, give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead these people for who is able to govern this great people of yours. Fill me with the spirit of wisdom that I may discern your will, almighty God. With you, Lord, there is strength and wisdom. Let my mouth speak wisdom, Lord, because of the righteousness you have imparted to me. Teach me to number my days, Lord, that I will apply my heart unto wisdom. I ask you to fill me with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. This will enable me to walk worthy of you, Lord unto all pleasing and to be fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of your ways. Thank you for this promise of wisdom, Lord. Your wisdom makes me happy, Lord, because the gain of it is better than fine gold. Because I'm, I'm in you and desire always to abide in you, you have made unto me wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. It is this reality 
that causes me to glory in you forever. Prayer number seven, the last prayer. My character will reflect the nature of Jesus. I vow to be like Christ every moment of my life. I declare that I'm faithful in my tithes, generous with my offering and sacrifice, always giving in love with and with joy and doing good works in, in God's house. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I ask to be like him, all through life's journey, from earth to glory, all I ask to be like him. Not in a measure, but in his fullness. All I ask is to be like him. Almighty God, daily I put off the old man and I put on the new man that is renewed in the knowledge after your image. Thank you for the renewal process that is taking place in the spirit of my mind as I put on a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and through holiness. Continue to renew my mind, Lord, and I thank you for giving me grace to cooperate with you. Everlasting Father, impart your holiness to me so that I may be pure in heart, capable of seeing you as you are in all your holiness, honor, power, and majesty. Holy is your name, Father. I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for always hearing our prayer because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We give glory, honor, and praise again unto the name of the living God. We thank God for these declarations. And as we've declared, the Lord has established it. And we receive this declaration in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now we're going into our time of the word. Our Bible reading this morning is Proverbs 29. Proverbs chapter 29, and Sister uh, Winifred will be, uh, will, be, will be reading for us, and Pastor Ernest will be bringing the word of God. Let's welcome Pastor Ernest. Glory be to God, hallelujah. We thank God for, once again, the opportunity and the privilege of being in his presence. Uh, we'll go through Proverbs 29. Let's read from verse 1 to 7. Good morning. Proverbs 29, 1 to 7 for now. Comparisons, warnings, and instructions continued. He that's been often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that's without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear it rule, the people mourn. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gift overthroweth it. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. And the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare, for the righteous doth sing and rejoice. The righteous considered the cause of the poor, but the wicked regarded not to know it. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And now verse 1 talks about rebuking. And uh, no one lies being rebuked. That's the human nature, right? But we should be open to correction and reproof. Uh, we should not have a hardened heart against it. But the Bible says, the verse 1 says, when we continue to do that distraction, is not far from us. We see in the book of uh, Galatians, uh, Paul and Peter were eating with the new Christians, you know, uh, the folks over there in Antioch. And now uh, when Peter saw some of the Jews come in and being a Jew himself because of their customs, he withdrew himself. And Paul said, I rebuked him openly before all of them for what he did was wrong because he was being a hypocrite at that time. And we did not read in the Bible that Paul, uh, Peter was against that rebuke. Peter took that rebuke in his stride. And I believe from that point, he changed his ways. Changed his ways, no longer being a hypocrite. So for being rebuked, it is for our own good to rebuke when we are in the wrong and need correction. The message translation of that verse one says, for people who hate discipline, only gets more stubborn. There will come a day when life tumbles in and they break, but by then it will be too late to help them. That should not be our portion. We should not get to that point where it's too late 
for us to be held because we have rejected rebuke, we have rejected wisdom, we have rejected correction. And we know also from verse three that wisdom is the principal thing. So when we engage in the wisdom of God in our daily living, God delights in us because we are walking in his ways. We are walking in his wisdom. It is the same thing that applies to us with our children. When our children walk in wisdom, they do the right thing. We rejoice in them. If we depart from the ways of wisdom, we become like an harlot. The harlot is the person or the one who moves from one thing to another consistently. The day is over here, tomorrow is there. And the Bible says, well, at the end of it, what? It will waste his wealth. That means you are doing, you are moving from one thing to the other consistently. And so we are not walking in wisdom at the end of it, but we are out of place. And then it doesn't benefit us. We end up losing all. Verse six is evil people fall into their own traps. Evil people fall into their own traps. And we should not be the ones plotting evil against anyone. Because if we do, it ensnares us. And a snare is a trap. We cannot go beyond that. We all know when there is a rat, there is a mouse, we put a trap in our house, whatever it is, to catch that rouse, whatever it is. And that means what? That route, that mouse or whatever it is cannot move beyond that trap. We are ensnared by our own traps when we what? Plot evil against people. In verse 7, again, we see the wisdom in taking care of the poor. The avenues God provides us to beautify our lives. The avenues God provides it. The righteous considers the cause of the poor. The wicked does not understand this mystery of the kingdom of God. Verse 8 to 14. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contended with a foolish man, whether he rage or love, there is no rest. The bloodthirsty hates the upright, but the just seek his soul. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterward. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful men meet together. The Lord lingereth both their eyes. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. Glory be to God. Now verse 9 says, if a wise man contends with the foolish man, whether the fool rages or laughs, there is no peace. The foolish here is one who is void of understanding or sound judgment. There is no need for us to engage with such a person in an argument, except to disagree and move on. Likewise, there are some who always want to find blame with others for one thing or the other. It's encouraging us that we should not indulge with them, but instead be gracious to them. Because through our well-mannered culture, through doing that, we may be able to win them over and remember, we always have the backing of God when we are in alignment with him. Verse 11, a fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. And we've heard through, we've heard uh, this through the case, the course of studying in this book, from the book uh, in Proverbs 1 to now, talking about the fool and how they talk. So the advice is what, know when to hold your tongue. Know when to hold your tongue. The greatest trait we can learn is the vocabulary of silence. The greatest trait we can learn is the vocabulary of silence. If you know what you're going to say, it's going to cause your downfall. Learn that vocabulary of silence. Learn to hold yourself, to hold yourself, to control yourself. Hallelujah. Verse 15 to 22. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but the child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish, 
but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. A servant will not be corrected by words for thought, for thou he understand he will not answer. For though he understand, he will not answer. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words, there is more hope of a fool than of him. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. An angry man stirred up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Amen. Also, okay. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, these are all instructions for wise living. Verse 15, and this is to all parents and upcoming ones. All right. Verse 15 says, The rod and rebuke give wisdom. The rod, the rod and rebuke give wisdom. But a child left to himself brings shame. His mother. Hebrews 12, 6 is for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, right? And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So if God himself, who is full of love, who is love itself, chastens, rebukes, corrects us when we are in the wrong, how much us with our kids, with our children? And we know God's love is unconditional. The agape love of God is unconditional towards us. Even with that, he still chastens us. Our love is not. That is why we can quickly disown other people. So we cannot claim the name of love in the name of love, being the reason we are not disciplining our children. Because the word says the rod and rebuke give wisdom. They give wisdom. God said, I know Abraham, for he will train his children and household after him. And the word training is not sweet talking. So we have a duty to train our children. When we train them in the way they should go when they grow up, they will not depart from it. Verse 17, is a correct your son and he will give you rest. Same thing. Say, so yes, he will give delight to your soul. Correct your son. Not pamper your son when he's in the road. Correct your son and he will give you rest. And he will bring delight to your soul. Verse 18, so where there is no vision, where there is no uh, revelation, the people will perish. So we should have a purpose. We should have a plan or a direction for our lives. Because without it, we walk on in darkness. Walk on in darkness, meaning we are all fruitful. We are all fruitful. We are not happy because we lack that vision, that purpose, that plan for our lives. Now, what Bishop said, but if you don't have a destination or know where you are headed, any place you get to may look like it because you lack that vision, you lack that direction, you lack that purpose. So we should have that in our lives. Verse 20 says, do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than him. Now, these are our instructions for wise living. There is more hope for a fool than him. We've talked a lot about words already. A person who talks anyhow, the Bible says, is less than a fool. A fool is better off than that person, meaning what no one takes him or her seriously. When a fool comes to give you a person, you call a fool comes to give you advice, you do not take it. To anyone who talks hastily, no one takes that person seriously. It's less than a fool. Verse 22 says, an angry person starts fight. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sin. And this is where we find ourselves lacking sometimes. Hallelujah. You know when you are angry, the devil uses that opportunity to remind you of every negative thing that person has done or said, you know, and all that, and all, and all that. And that even boils you up. He will flood your mind with thoughts to stir the anger in you. And as soon as you give action to those thoughts, there is no turning back. 
Bible says in Ephesians 4, 26, say, be angry and do not sin. You can be angry, all right. That's okay, but do not sin. So we should learn to control ourselves. We learn to control ourselves. Angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person will commit all kinds of sin. Words will be falling out of his or her mouth in any order at any given time. Words that you cannot collect them back. Words that I'm sorry is not enough. So we should be able to control ourselves. Verses 23 to 27. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with the thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing and bewareth it not. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment coming from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. Amen. Hallelujah. We talked about the proud yesterday. The Bible says pride goeth before destruction. Verse 24, if you assist a thief, you only hurt yourself. And I know many of us, myself included, will say I've never assisted a thief in my life before, which is true. But do you know liars are likened to thieves? We should not be assisting anyone to tell a lie knowingly. We do these things unconsciously all the time, but it ought not to be so. We lose our integrity in the end when we do such things. There is nothing like a small lie or a big lie. A lie is a lie. And then finally, don't seek the favor of man. Just be right with God and trust in him, and he will see you through. The Bible says the deep places, the difficult, the enchanted, the places that cannot be ventured or dead, the impossible places are in the hands of God. And also, the Bible says to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruled in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will. So God is the one who gives, not man. So this morning, relax and continue to align yourself with him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We'll go into our personal moment, our personal time with the King of Kings, the Lord of the Lords this morning as we received instructions concerning wise way of living this morning. Let's go before him and ask also for the grace and the ability to be able to follow through with this. That is why that has come to us will have free course in our lives among other things, among other petitions that you are bringing to him this morning. Let's go before him and we'll be back shortly.
Amen. Amen. We thank God so much for, um, again, for this morning. We thank God so much uh, for such, a, you know, a, a precious time in his presence. We give him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. God is a good God. And we thank God for all this wisdom that daily he brings to us. The wisdom, his word is full of wisdom. The Bible says the whole earth is filled with God's wisdom. You know, we can look at the trees and learn from the trees. We can look at the seas and learn from the seas. We can look at animals and learn from them. We can look at the ants and learn from the ants. You know, we can look at the seasons and learn from them. Look at nature, learn from planting a seed and, and harvesting. We can even look at the rain coming down, the seasons, you know, all that, the soil, right? Look at the soil and learn wisdom from the soil. You know, how a seed is put in the soil and water is put on that seed and and, and the soil is manured, right? You know, to talk about how we, we should also enrich our life. I mean, the creation of God, nature is filled so much with wisdom. I mean, just look at science, look at medical science, look at astrology, look at physics and chemistry and biology and anatomy and everything. There is so much wisdom that we can learn from the Lord's creation. So the whole, the whole, the whole earth is filled with God's glory. The whole earth is filled with God's mercies and his, his wisdom. And as we continue to, to study the book of Proverbs, I mean, my prayer is that we will seek God's wisdom. The Bible says, seek wisdom. You know, he didn't say wisdom will just come out onto you. He said, go and seek wisdom. So my prayer for all of us is that as we go through this, this book of Proverbs, we will hunger for God's wisdom and we will seek God's wisdom. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing how much richness is in this book of the Proverbs. And I pray that we'll make it, we'll continue to meditate upon it day and night. It become part of our daily living. And we ask the Lord to fill us with his spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. We thank God so much for all that. We give him all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we will uh, call Sister Lydia to give us the announcements and, you know, and, and the closing blessings. Amen. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, we thank God today for all of his goodness, his mercy upon us. Um, Y'all know that uh, this program runs Monday through Friday, uh, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Mountain Time. So continue to invite friends, family, everyone you know to come and get this refreshing that we're getting, uh, to come and enjoy the goodness of the Lord that we do receive every day for, our, for commanding our days, for beginning our week, for celebrating his goodness and all that he does for us. Today, as you go, I just want to bless everyone with a blessing that Moses said upon the children of Israel, blessing the house of Joseph, that blessed be the Lord. Um, it bless the Lord in his land so that God can give you the choicest things of heaven with the dew and from the deep lying beneath and with the choice that the, the sun yields, that as you go today, God will go before you and help you and direct you and strengthen you with everything that he has, even with the wisdom that we have received today, that it shall be our strength, that it shall be the things that we speak, the things that we handle, the things that we think shall be from the wisdom that we have received from the Lord. May the Lord bless you with that. All right, let's share the goodness of God today. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. <laughs>